Hi guys, I wanted to make this tutorial to show you how I was able to set up grabbing this lever in VR. I've seen a few tutorials, um, but I still had trouble with the rotation. It was never quite right and it would sometimes flip uh, once it got past 180 degrees. So I just want to show you what I was able to get set up here. Uh, you'll see once this moves into the collision box that it will, the bolt will follow the hand uh, on the roll rotation here, which is what I want for rotating this sniper bolt. And while I was doing this, I also looked at the uh, pitch and your rotations as well for like pulling levers and spinning wheels around and things like that. So I'll show you on the function. Um, quickly change that now. So if I change the rotation to pitch, then you'll see that once the hand is within range, the lever will follow it on the uh, Y rotation like this, which could be useful for pulling a lever or something. And this works 360 degrees, all directions. Uh, and it doesn't matter where the hand is. Um, it's only looking at the X and Z axis for determining how to rotate the lever or the bolt in this case. And I'll also show the your rotation as well. Um, so this could be useful for like rotating a steering wheel or something like that. So you can see it'll follow the hand around like this. Okay, so now that I've shown you what I've got set up, um, this is the code here. It's quite simple and um, it's just looking at uh, it's using the overlap uh, collision on this box here and once it detects collision uh, with another object it will then cast the motion controller actor if it casts successfully then it will save it as a variable um, and then on event tick it just checks every frame whether the motion controller variable has been set and then if it has it will use the grab sphere um, and the grab sphere is sort of central to where the hand is. So we use this position here. And then within this function, um, I've got code for the roll rotation. This is what it looks like. I'll go through it with it in a bit more detail in a minute. But if you just want to grab the code, then this is what you need uh, for pitch. And this is the uh, code that you need to rotate it uh, on the Z axis for your. Um, so within the function, I've, I've just to make it easier to switch it, I've set up an enum, which um, I can use to control whether I want to use roll rotation, pitch or your. So that was, uh, where did I set that up? Uh, here, I just made one called component rotations and just named it like this. Uh, and then I can use that as an input for the function, but I mean, you could use like an integer or a string value, whatever you wanted, and then just have it switch here. Um, so this is the other bit that I know some people might have struggled with is it needs to be relative because I want to be able to rotate this in relative space, not world space. So whatever rotation this is in, it still needs to be rotating on the same axis. Uh, it can't be using world space. Um, so I know that some people may struggle with that. So the way around that is to use invert, inverse transform location. So that will take the location of the motion controller, which is the target, and then it will convert that from world space into relative space. So it will use the location of the hand uh, relative to this actor. And then that means that you can compare it to the relative location of the movable component, which in this case is the sniper rifle bolt here. And then the other part that I struggled with was I was just using the, uh, the normal locations for start and target 
and this was giving me some trouble because it was uh, it was flipping the rotation. So the way around this is to only use the um, so to only use the axes that aren't the same as the axis that it's rotating on. So in this example, we want to use roll. We want to add roll rotation. So that means that we want to we want to rotate this bolt on the x-axis, which means that we need to look at the y and the z-axis of the motion controller hand uh, relative to the bolt. So it means we need to ignore the x-axis if that's the axis that we want to rotate the bolt on. And that's the same for um, pitch and yaw as well. So in this case, we're ignoring the um, y-axis of each component. And uh, for your will, we're um, ignoring the z-axis. And then doing a fine look at rotation. Uh, and then I've just added an offset here because I want to use like where this part of the bolt sits as the uh, sort of target, because the main focus for me here was just the raw rotation. So uh, that's not that important. But if you want to, you can just add an offset. And then we're just setting the relative rotation. Um, and on the pitch and roll, I also had to check uh, what the your rotation was and then use that um, to avoid it uh, flipping because sometimes once it gets past 180 degrees rotation, it would, it would flip and it would start going the other way. So that's how I solved this. So um, yeah, I'll copy all this code and leave it in the description. So if you just want to copy and paste it and create this function quickly in your project, then you can do that. But that's a kind of quick breakdown of how I was able to um, set up all of these rotations uh, in relative space and uh, avoid the rotation flipping after 180 degrees. Um, I couldn't find much else online. So I thought I'd share this uh, in case it helps anyone else who's looking to set up this sort of rotation um, with like levers and wheels and things like that in uh, virtual reality. So hope that helps.